Hey everybody, uh, I want to do something a little different tonight. Uh, now I have cleaned up uh, after Squeaker helped me with my water change, so I got all the water vacked up. My new wet vac worked great. Um, I want to feed this tank and I want to do it a little differently tonight. Uh, I'm actually going to do two videos on this tank. One, I'm going to actually discuss the tank itself, where I got my woodwork, how I prepared my wood, etc. So that will be coming up later. It's probably going to be a little more long-winded. Uh, and I'll let you just have a nice long, steady tank uh, look at the tank. Right now, if you'll notice, the texture and look of this tank is a little bit different than it normally is if you're an avid viewer. Um, and that is because I have the front um, T5 unit turned off. Uh, again, this is just little changes you can make that just completely change the feel and the texture of the tank. It's calmed everybody down, etc. Um, but tonight I want to talk about a fish that I have on the bottom of the tank. He is a black ghost knife fish. He's a very reclusive. He's a shy and timid eater. So if you're in a situation like that and you have uh, Congo Tetras in the tank, which I do in this tank, um, they are insane when food goes in the tank. So somebody like a black ghost knife fish would not normally get um, food. I actually used to have my African butterfly fish in here. If you've ever wondered why my African butterfly fish is not in my African tank, uh, it's because he's a very finicky eater. He only eats crickets. And I was literally having to put six or seven crickets at a time in the tank to make sure one of them got to him uh, because the Congos would just destroy them and tear them apart. So incompatibility with fish uh, doesn't necessarily resort to whether or not um, they're aggressive or territorial. Sometimes it's just a matter of will a fish starve if they're in a, in a tank with other fish that just eat too much. So I'm in the unique situation with these Congos that they spawn about every other day and the eggs they scatter do fine for my black ghost knife fish. I actually just saw a little glimpse of my black ghost knife fish so that'll work out better for the demonstration purposes. Um, so I just want to demonstrate a little technique I came up with. I don't think this is anything brilliant or genius. Um, you take a little section of uh, PVC pipe, anything like that, you get yourself a little funnel and in this case I am feeding just some blood worms now I want you to notice how clear that water is that those blood worms are sitting in when you get blood worms when you get brine shrimp when you get even like the vegetables that are mixed and chopped and then um, frozen into I think they call them little uh, gumdrops or something like that uh, what they are frozen in is guar gum, and it, it makes for a nice binding agent, and it holds them into that nice ice cube shape. But when you put that in your tank, and if you put it directly in your tank, the guar gum will just blow up your phosphates in the tank. And phosphates are usually more responsible for uh, algal blooms and stuff like that than the nitrates are. Uh, a lot of people, I, in my opinion, people don't test their tanks often enough. Uh, but when they do, they test for the big four that you get in your nitrogen cycle people rarely test for phosphates and that's normally okay if you're you know feeding normally um, and you're keeping an eye on your nitrates your nitrates are never going to get um, or, or you, your phosphates are never really going to get out of control without your nitrates doing the same thing so if you're keeping an eye on your nitrates your nitrates are getting up you know 40 50 parts per million you're ready to do a water change you're taking care of the phosphates at the same time. If, however, you don't know what you're doing and you're feeding these blood worms three or four times a week, you're dumping a lot of phosphates into your tank. Um, so in that case, you've now thrown it way out of balance and, and you would be uh, having much higher than usual phosphates in relation to your nitrates. So in that case, if you were only testing for your nitrates, uh, you would be unaware of how quickly your phosphates were actually raising and then you would be just coming into the issues with way too much um, uh, organics in your tank and your algal growth would go out of control and so on and so forth. It's not good for your tank to put way too much phosphates in there. So always do what I do and I fill the little, um, I guess this was probably originally a shot glass or a snifter or something like that, whatever you would call one of these things. Um, I just fill it with water, throw the cube in there, let it melt. Um, I rinse it, I drain as much of the water out as I can without pouring the worms out and then I fill it back up and let it all swirl around. I let the worms settle to the bottom and then I pour off as much water as I can and then I fill it up and I do that three, four, five times, however long it takes me until that water is clear. And then I feed the uh, 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 tank with it. So this is all I'm gonna do is I just basically put this end, I guess you can see that where I want it, 
I stick the funnel in the other end and then you simply pour and hopefully I'm gonna actually move the camera a little bit so you can maybe see how this actually comes out the end and I think in there is where I saw the uh, knife fish right now my uh, synodonis is sticking his face out yeah and the knife fish is uh, or maybe not I don't know we'll see but you just want to put it down to where you want to get it and this will actually prevent the uh, tetras from getting it make sure I don't spill this anywhere so hopefully you can see I just spilled a little bit, but that was just water. And that was a lot, but I have catfish and other things on the bottom. You, you just saw that big Cynodonna sitting right there. So I got other things on the bottom that'll eat that. That won't go to waste or sit and rot overnight or anything like that. Um, but that was just an excellent demonstration of how in a tank full of cherry barbs and Congo tetras, I just put an entire cube full of blood worms directly on the bottom of the tank, and none of those fish... Um, got to it. Now you're actually going to see my Tenopoma come get some of them. Um, he loves him some uh, blood worms. Of course I've never met a fish yet that doesn't love him some blood worms. Um, so everybody might scatter for a second. I'm going to go ahead and close the lid and then I'm going to turn that forward uh, light fixture back on. Uh, and this one does actually have one of the uh, T5 high outputs as a 10,000 K uh, uh, lamp or tube I should say. So you get a really nice uh, nice white light on that so I'm gonna walk in the other room and, and put this stuff away so I'll let the camera go ahead and run for another minute or two and uh, that's all I really wanted to do is I just wanted to give you a simple demonstration of a very easy technique to get food onto the bottom if you do have a fish that is reclusive or a cave dweller or nocturnal or for whatever other reason you need to specifically get food to them and prevent other animals from getting it See, those congres are right there next to it, and they're just, they're not even aware that there's a big pile of food on the, on the bottom of the tank right next to them. They're just not bottom feeders. They feed out of the water column. So once you get it to the bottom, I don't know if you can see, I guess you can, that Cynodontis is back there. He's just cleaning up. He looks like a little hoover back there. Um, so hopefully that, that uh, knife fish will get some of those. If not, in this case, again, it's no big deal. I'm just doing this more for demonstration purpose than necessity. Um, but you go ahead and view that for a minute. I'm going to put this stuff away and then I'll be right back and we'll call that a video. So thanks for watching and uh, please subscribe. Okay, everybody, I don't see the uh, black ghost anywhere, which I was hoping maybe you'd get a little glimpse of him while I was out of the room. So I'm going to call this video. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and reset the camera and uh, get, let the tank settle down. Then I will do uh, a little more video on this tank tonight where you get the whole tank, and I'll just go ahead and talk. So if you want, you can mute me, shut me up, and uh, just enjoy the tank, or you can listen to my stories. So thanks again for watching. Please subscribe. Please like my videos.